Hi. Author Lisa Hilton is uh, <laughs> is here now, and you would be the first to say that the passages that we've chosen to read out have been very carefully selected. They were very discreetly chosen, yes. Because unlike Fifty Shades of Grey, and we'll get this sort of done straight away, unlike Fifty Shades of Grey, this is much more graphic. It is a lot more graphic, but Maestro is also a thriller. It's definitely not a love story. Yeah. It's not a romance, and the heroine is certainly not a virgin. But you would be, if you were wanting the sort of saccharine sex of Fifty Shades, you might be a little surprised by the graphic nature of this one. I think you'd be horrified, absolutely. Not least because of the body count in the book. Right. So who is this book for, then? Um, it's very much a, a grown-up book. It's um, for men and women. Um, as I say, it's, it's got lots and lots of things besides sex in it. It's got art, it's got murder, it's got the mafia, it's got a real thriller plot, um, and it's also got some excellent outfits, because I really don't see why sociopaths have to be badly dressed. Right. <laughs> so very important. <laughs> So I think it's really a book for everybody. Um, I think it's for men and women, um, and different aspects of it will appeal to different people. It nearly didn't make it. I mean, what we're holding here took a while to get off the ground, didn't it? I mean, it was sort of rejected at, at every stage. You'd almost given up hope That's of it ever right. being published. Yes. And then suddenly, as these things do, people were fighting over it. Well, I, I tried to give it to my agent. I tried to give it to my long-term publisher. Um, nobody was interested. I had thought of self-publishing it, um, and I was really despairing about no one wanting it. And then a friend of mine who owns a restaurant has um, a famous publisher as a client, and she put it on his plate one evening. And the next morning when she went to work, he was standing outside waiting for her on the pavement. He'd read the book in one night. Um, and so from it being a book I couldn't give away, um, six weeks later, I found myself on the plane to Hollywood, which I still can't believe. But you're wow. saying that you, you wow. uh, had applied for another job. That's right, yes. And they got turned down for that job, but, but got the book deal on the same day. Well, you know, in the morning I was turned down for um, a job teaching creative writing. Um, and in the afternoon, I sold my novel for a million dollars. So that was an interesting... You threw up, didn't you? Yeah, I did actually. I was sick. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe the numbers. My, my publisher was saying the numbers and I was saying, oh, yes, that's fine. And then I said, what? What did you say? Mm. And then, I, yeah, I did have to run to the loo wow. and be sick, which so, is not stylish. No. No. But I can I understand, understand why. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk a bit about the plot uh, yes. without giving anything away. But the, the girl in it, this sort of, sort of powerful, strong female, she knows her mind, she's not interested in relationships, but she likes to have sex. She does. Um, and she's Judith. The heroine is Judith Rashley. She starts off life as an assistant in an auction house. Um, I suppose if I had to describe her, I'd say that she's a woman of um, passion, ruthlessness, ambition and appetite, not just for sex, but for everything, for power, for beauty, for experience. Um, and she's entirely unapologetic. She's a very modern woman. She is entirely in control of herself and she doesn't see the need to feel guilty about pleasure. Mm -hmm. But she gets herself into a bit of trouble, doesn't she? Because when she's at this auction house, she uncovers this conspiracy. That's right. She discovers an art forgery and when she tries to expose it, she's fired. So she's forced to fall back on slightly different resources. And then, um, yes, that, that's really where the adventures mm. begin and she takes off around Europe. And why, we won't go into um, it anymore. Judith? Judith is an unlikely name for a character in a book well, like this. Because she is um, inspired by the 17th century painter Artemisia Gentileschi, who painted a very famous picture called Judith Beheading Holofernes. I won't oh, say more than that. OK, OK, fair. so I understand. Because the, the, the names that we were flicking through this morning as you do. As you do. Um, and, you were looking um, for the sweaty bits at the edge of the page. He was. I've, made, I've made the sweaty bits on the edge of the page. He was this was a new book, because normally in naughty books, when you go like that, it opens up on the good bit naturally, because that's the most thumbed bit. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed it is. <laughs> and so your... <laughs> uh, your... Um, your family, I mean, you, they are used to you writing historic biographies, right. they're used to that sort of background. And this is a, this is a leap forward. As you say, very importantly, it's a, it is a, it's a thriller. Um, but, but because of those scenes, specifically at the beginning there, what, what does your father think of that? Well, my father hasn't read it yet, but I think probably because he's just not that interested. As you say, I, I've written quite a lot of history books and my family are not really all that impressed by it. So uh, my mother and my sister have read it, though, and they what both... What do they think? Well, 
My mother's a broad-minded woman. Good. Um, <laughs> and they both said they liked it very much. Oh, well, that's good. You did have to do a bit of research for this, though, obviously, I as you did. do with full books. Um, well, that was, that was useful because um, coming out of a history background, I realised the importance of making sure that you're really convincing in your research. So I did lots of things. Um, I flew to Geneva to interview a banker about moving money around illegally. I interviewed a member of the British Armed Services about guns. And? And, of course, I went to a sex party in Paris. And it was quite a revelation. In, in what, what way? way? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't together too much. <laughs> well, I'd expected it to be, well, sleazy, frankly. Yeah. And, in fact, it was, it was really like going to a rather sort of elegant bar. The people were well-dressed, well um, they were rather, rather attractive. Um, it was very nicely done. Um, it, was, it was really quite elegant. It wasn't and, at and all what I'd been expecting. And people in control of their own choices and destinies and comfortable Absolutely. in their own bodies. Um, pe people were obviously, you know, getting up to all sorts, but there was no sense of coercion or of voyeurism. It was absolutely the opposite of what I'd expected a place like Did that to be. Did they mind you standing there watching them? Well, I was very discreet. I took um, a male friend as a decoy, so we blended subtly into the crowd. Were you dressed? Oh, absolutely. Yes, completely, yes. Of course. Well, you, you don't have yeah. to ask these questions. You were at a sex party. <laughs> 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 and so is there, is there another one? This is a trilogy. Um, the second two books are being finished in the summer. So Ka-ching. She's going to have lots <laughs> more adventures. Yeah. And a possible film? Well, the, the manuscript was brought um, in, in seven days uh, by Amy Pascal. Um, it's her first project as a producer. Mm. And the script is being written, has been written, actually, by the same lady who has just done The Girl on the Train. Oh, oh wow. So I'm really lucky that these two amazing women are interested in the book. Gosh, well, good luck with it. Thank you very much. And it's much. really lovely it's to really meet you. Nice I'm looking forward to reading you. it. Thank you very much indeed.